To go to Kenya is to come face to face with the history of the world and of man and to find yourself in the birthplace of mammals. The Rift Valley runs the whole length of the country and joins other fissures to form this impressive mass of tectonic movements that stretches all the way from Jordan to Mozambique. Violent earthquakes have totally changed the face of this region. Originally, it was a vast wooded plateau, slowly shelving to the Indian Ocean. Then new summits were formed that cut off the rains. Thus, little by little, the forest retreated, leaving the savanna that we know today. It's probably this change of environment that favored the emergence of a new species, Homo sapiens, or man and woman. The Masai Mara Plateau forms a gigantic arena, more than three kilometers, nearly two miles in circumference. Mara, the country of the Maasai, means many colored in their language. This comes perhaps from the play of the colors of these hills, studded with clumps of trees and thorn thickets, and speckled with millions of grass eaters that cover the region. The border of the reserve to the west is a gigantic cliff, the Olulolo Escarpment, a name that suggests the echoes that bounce back from it. On the Kikarak Hills, you can still find villages where time seems to pass more slowly. The huts are always made from branches and sisal grass. Music and dancing are ever-present. Drums, either traditional or improvised from whatever they find, set the rhythm of the dance. Their feet, covered with small bells, stamp the ground as if to assert their ancestral lineage. But this is the earth they sprang from. A simple melody is played on a sort of ocarina, a little wind instrument made out of baked earth or a hollowed out dried fruit. The Rift Valley also produced a series of lakes. Lake Baringo, Lake Naishava, and Lake Nakuru. Pink flamingos are the main tenants, but there are also many cormorants and marabous. The water has a high sodium content from constantly washing over volcanic ash. But there's another lake that resulted from these seismic upheavals, Lake Victoria. This inland sea covers a surface of 68,000 square kilometers. It's the biggest lake in Africa and the second largest freshwater lake in the world. The triangular sails, called latines, of the Lake Victoria fishing fleet recall the time when Arab slave traders captured their unfortunate merchandise near the lake. Because this is where more than two million Luo live. Originally from Sudan, they formed the biggest non-Bantu group in the country. Although cattle continue to dominate their ritual and economic activities, an increasingly important share of the subsistence comes from agriculture, from sorghum, millet, sugarcane, and coffee production, as well as fishing. <laughs> 